Justin here with Between the Studs, and I am sitting next to two giants in the Lego world and and Lego parts and stuff. So what we're talking about today, I'm sorry. What we're talking about today <laughs> is rare pieces. And the Atlanta Brick Company has tons of rare pieces that we have just accumulated over time, right? Like we don't mm -hmm. collect them, they come to us. Yeah, correct. They, we're gra they're gravitated toward us. Now let's set some ground rules. What do you guys consider a rare piece? Where is that cutoff? How do we define it? You know, things that if you were to look on BrickLink, you can't buy any more than one of them at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, that's, that's a great Or way. you can't buy it at all. Would you guys, or is this too loose of a definition, would you guys consider something that's just a piece that's out of print now? Maybe it was common at one time, but mm -hmm. you can't just go to the store and buy it. Like, I, like let's say the monkey. We have tons of the old monkey. The old pirate monkey. Yeah, yeah but it's you can't not, get it anymore. It's not rare. Yeah, I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't count him or any other pieces. And, and, you know, for the sake of the podcast, we're not going to talk about animals, really, okay. or mini figures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because some of those can definitely be rare. figure parts. Yeah. Try to, because that's another discussion. Yeah. Rare minifigures. I think okay. we're talking about rare pieces, like bricks yeah. and, uh, yeah. yeah. Roots okay, and, yeah. so definitely just single rare mm -hmm. pieces, bricks and plates and mm -hmm. odd things like yeah. that. It's something that's not only can you not get anymore, but also very scarce. Yeah. And because of that, it's kind of expensive for mm -hmm. most things. So we're going to take more of a shotgun approach. You guys all pulled mm -hmm. rare pieces, what you considered interesting and mm -hmm. rare, and then Angie helped us pull some stuff as well from her secret stash yep. that she has upstairs. So who wants to start? Go ahead, Mark. I have a pretty interesting uh, collection of weird pieces. They're not a as rare as some, but they are getting pretty hard to find these days. Okay. And uh, that, that is the, uh, it's the quarter of a big, like a sphere or um, a, um, a saucer dome. And uh, the, that one in particular is from the old, I think it's the first generation Millennium Falcon. Set. It is, yeah. From the early 2000s, a lot of weird pieces that we'll be talking about today will be from those years. And so they're just awesome. They don't make pieces that big that often anymore. You know, it's like, it's as big as like, I forget how the dimensions plate wise, but it's, it, it, it's hard to fit on a 16 by 16. And that's a big piece. I just think they're awesome. You got that one from the Millennium Falcon. This one's from the... Uh, the droid tank, okay. another Star Wars property. So the next size down. Exactly, you have two different sizes. I thought they were really neat. So um, as a master mock maker, what would you use unprinted versions of these for? Yes, they actually don't make a lot of unprinted ones, but there are some neat uh, colors in this one from the UFO. I think these are the late 90s. Okay. This is my particular favorite one. You also have the underside pieces that were pretty oh, wow. cool. Too. So very, just weird, huge, awesome pieces. And here's the thing, as a, as a mock builder, these are very difficult to actually integrate into anything else because they're a very specific piece. Uh, they're basically only useful for like a saucer or a dome or something like that. But um, I just think they're just perfect for this discussion because they're so weird and they're so out there and they're, they're cool looking, but they, I don't think we'll ever see anything like mm -hmm. that again. Really, because they'll do it in some other technique or form. Well, and because of the limitation. Yeah, exactly. Now, when was the last time we saw these? Probably with the Star Wars ones, actually, because mm -hmm. these would have been a slightly earlier from the 90s. Probably so this was 1999, yeah. the first Falcon, mm -hmm. and the tank was 1999. Yeah, so we so. won't, I don't think we'll see anything like those again. Mm -hmm. And they're just really cool. And they are getting harder to find. Like, you probably can't get more than one or two or three of these a piece anywhere, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I love how these are transparent, yeah. neon green, so you can see inside. And actually the set that they originally came with was taking advantage of that and having tubes and other pieces underneath them. That little thing that I whipped up doesn't have that, but it was super cool to see them using that. So. And the underside too, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Inverted. I should know that. On BrickLink I... terminology, yeah. That's it. And they did make unprinted very often, you said. Yeah, not very often. They went mostly with the Star Wars or the UFO printing, and then they had the trans ones that weren't printed. What clever ways have you seen these used, Mark? Anything? Come so mind. when I was a kid, I had a couple of these transparent ones from sets that I got, and I used them as like a portal mm -hmm. or other things. So the transparent ones I found more useful because they didn't have those printing. Mm -hmm. But um, the, I could see these used as cool spaceships, as like just anything that needs that kind of big curve shape. It's pretty cool. Mostly sci-fi, I think, is what they mm -hmm. kind of go for, or maybe even like a really large plant for the transparent ones, if it's like a space plant or something. Yeah. yeah. And we did talk about this a little bit before. A lot of these pieces are from 
the late 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And that was when Lego was in trouble. And what I read is that that was part of the reason that they weren't, they were too crazy with molds and recoloring things and they weren't very cost conscious in a lot of ways. And part of the restructuring when they came back out of that trouble time was they eliminated all these crazy new molds and stuff. Mm -hmm. We had this like high point of crazy weird pieces, just tons and tons of one-off stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of disappeared for a while. And you were mentioning now we're kind of seeing that again yeah. in in the time we live in now, that we're seeing a, this resurgence of these one-off colors and or one-off pieces. new pieces every couple sets, yeah. Um, I would say back then there was definitely a large scale of volume and very weird colors. I would say now we're seeing a lot of new pieces but it is kind of more within Lego's new plan in that they're very small mm -hmm. and they're usually in existing colors. They have a, some new colors these days, but it's mostly like, oh, it's just a part that we've seen before in a color that we haven't seen it in yet. That's still within Lego's ecosystem. So they're, they're um, especially smaller stuff. So it's not as well as it used to be, but it is a lot more new pieces than there used to okay. be. Okay, sure. so it's a controlled yeah. craziness. It's, it's, a, it's a controlled expansion of the Lego uh, diversification of pieces. All right, what do you have for us? We'll start with these oversized boats here. This looks a lot like their common boat that you find. The mm -hmm. dinghy? Yeah, the dinghy, but that's a little bit bigger than a, a regular dinghy. So that only came in one set, and then the brown, so that kind of dates it being the old it's brown, brown. Yeah. that only came in one set. And they were, uh, I think this one was an adventures set, and that one was a um, Jackstone pirate set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Captain Scraggs. <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> yeah. And uh, with those, they, they only came in one set. I think they go for like $10 each. I'm yeah, so quite rare as yeah. far as pieces go, yeah. We have looked high and low to complete the adventure set. Mm -hmm. and that's why we know that that's a rare piece because we've looked for it and couldn't find it. This was odd because when I first saw these, I... So I'm at a distance, like, oh, that's the regular dinghy. Mm, the and then you get up to it, it's like, oh, this is almost twice the size. Mm -hmm. and like you said, it's it's really, really rare. It only came in these two colors. And each color only came in one set. Yeah. So when you're seeing them on brick link, it's like, why is that dinghy so expensive? <laughs> Count the number of studs. <laughs> <laughs> this might have come on one of those boats, but that's that's a rare color. That only count, came on one set. That's a ship's mast in tan and I, i'm not 100 percent sure which set that came on but it was probably one of the jackstone pirate sets mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the jackstone series had a lot of big big elements they were coming out in the late 90s early 2000s and it was all around that time that lego was having problems and mm -hmm. they were coming out with all these oddball pieces what i do like about the jackstone sets is that they were printed because they were for kids. They were their junior line at the time, the juniors line. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want the little kids with their dexterity having to deal with stickers mm -hmm. because they knew the stickers would end up all over the place. Yeah. 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 They would not be on straight. Yeah. <laughs> so like, that's what's so great about those junior sets and what makes them more expensive per part is because they're bigger elements and they're printed parts. Mm -hmm. and instead of stickers, so they cost more money to make. 150 piece set, junior set, is $30 because the size of the elements and the printed parts. So that it's the same concept with the Jackstone. Is this mold still in print now? Probably not. I doubt it, yeah. Okay, because yeah. I don't recognize this top part. I've seen uh, the mast before, but this top part... It's almost like the combination of a couple pieces because you have the little crow's nest area and then the mast. Like, mm -hmm. I think they just have the mast piece now for modern ships that mm -hmm. they've done in the past couple years. So. And on these rare parts, so you can look them up pretty easy. Most Lego pieces have a unique part number on them. So like the boat here, it says 33129, and you can just go into BrickLink and type in that part number and it just comes right up. It shows you how many sets it was in. You can look at the price guide, how much it costs, mm -hmm. uh, how rare it is. So that's kind of what we use to guide us in whether something is rare or not. Way inside there, 48005. And that probably, you know, that's just a two by four mm -hmm. brick with a mast on it molded together. So that's probably the same spot on these bricks. What would you use this for besides a mast? Anything. Yeah, well, it could almost <laughs> work like a really tall column or a support yeah. for something. So that's mm -hmm. what I'd be thinking of, just this natural shape. 
but yeah. a pretty interesting piece. That one I think is a little more useful than the dome pieces because it's like a, a pillar. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do more naturally with like a, a stick versus like a big oval piece. You know, so. Do we have multiples of these? That's the only one. This is the only one in the now, whole store. in other colors like reddish brown, I think we have 15 or 20 of them. And that's still, even in reddish brown it's or brown, it's a, not a common piece. Yeah. But in tan, it's it's rare. Go big or go home here. With the, the <laughs> oh, <laughs> break up the weirdest of Lego um, offshoots. Back in 2002, as what the pieces are dated, uh, this show, Galador, Guardians of the Outer Dimension, or, or I may even be messing that up, but uh, there was a TV show and there were these action figure tie-ins that Lego did. And uh, they were unlike anything that had been seen before. Even Bionicle at least made sense a little bit within the Lego system. But these were just so far out and so early 2000s. And they were just amazing. So these big action figure pieces with these joints. Um, they rarely have connections that work with normal system pieces. Just awesome and bizarre. So I know the Galador figures. I didn't realize they did upscaled versions of it. Or is he upscaled? That is, is he a giant? That, that is show? the standard size for a uh, Galador action figure. Um, they made some smaller McDonald's ones. Oh. And um, that would, but so this is kind of like a mashup. I think this is what they were really intending for these things because Kip they're bash. so easy to mix and match. Yeah. I grabbed as many pieces from this villain guy as possible to make this like a kind of unholy mixture of uh, bug and action figure and, and guy. And it's, they made it, uh, quite a few of them. But as far as I can tell, they did not do well. Um, they're a big contributor to Lego not doing well in the early 2000s and led to their restructuring. But at, for the time, I remember looking at the magazines as a kid and being like, what are these? Yeah. <laughs> like, just where did these come from? Because I was looking for Lego sets, not like, these wild actually. Really, the only thing compatible with Lego on these are their uh, pin connectors. Yeah, you can so put those in other Technic pieces. They're just normal pin connectors that you could use in any Technic piece. Yeah. But that's it. There's no really no, There's uh, no studs, you know. stud or tubes. Yeah. They're, they're sure. very limited. But <clears throat> I guess they were going for a younger audience to just rip so. them off and change them real quick. Well, I think it was uh, similar to the Bionicle. Mm -hmm. Maybe simplified a bit because you yeah. needed axles and stuff for Bionicle, but mm -hmm. this is a bit uh, streamlined. So, yeah. But one thing about this guy is these pieces, if I can trigger it, watch out. There's a little trigger right on this gray piece if you hit it just right. There you go. That was a sad little... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the springs are older now, but that one will also launch if you kind of mess with that back piece there. Galador has a big following still. Yeah, because it's, it's popular. Like, only because it's Lego. If yeah. it weren't Lego, it would not have a big following, yeah. I don't think. They gave Galador a shout-out in the Ninjago mm -hmm. uh, movie, right? Yeah, oh, the guy with a t-shirt. Where the guy has a Galador t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Prominently mm -hmm. placed in his t-shirts. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more Galador in the future in some form or another. As a little tie-in or Easter yeah, egg. Yeah, at uh, Brick Fair, the last Brick Fair they had, which was, what, uh, not 2020, but 2019, Galador was everywhere. Yeah, it was the Galador and year, basically. Really? Yeah. It was really fun. Everybody who was into it was in their teens or early 20s. I was, you know, more or less making fun of it. They went from making fun of it, I think, mm -hmm. to embracing it and yeah. being really into it. They really, really? are just yeah. enjoying themselves yeah. with, with uh, Galador. It's I, great. I've always heard the Galador figures of the kid are disturbing because you it's pull his head off. It's Valley you, going on. Yeah, yeah. you change his legs around. It's very similar to the Star Wars Bubble figures where you've got this big old white flesh head, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just odd. Yeah, it's very <laughs> weird, especially, and I think in the show, he actually, the, the character, the guy, has stuff like his his arm becomes a mechanical and stretches out and does it, and his jetpack pop out of his back and mm -hmm. weird stuff. So it's kind of like it, it all ties in, but at the same time, that is a weird concept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was live action too. Yeah, it was live action and, and really, really bad. bad scene. Scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Has Galador gone up in price? I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah. and obviously you can't. They're they they they're hard to find. You can't get a ton of these arms at once. You can maybe find one or two or three on Bricklink at a time. So it's just like rare, weird stuff. In fact, in our sorting room, this these parts get thrown out a lot. Because they don't realize they're This like is part of the training with these guys. Is we have to train them what Gowdor parts are. 
so wow. they don't get thrown out. Mm-hmm. Is this a nearly complete set, or is this a set and a half? I think this is like a little more than a full set, because I think right. he only had one launcher arm, and then I think he had like one arm, and so he would have only had two legs. I don't, okay. and he actually has extra spots for stuff on his back. The set only came with a certain amount of pieces, but he was designed to have more pieces stuck yeah. on if you want to. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've done here. It's kind of more than a, one full set, I believe. He is cool looking. Yeah, but pretty menacing. Def- definitely not Lego looking. <laughs> we talked about this in our most recent Star Wars Episode 2 podcast mm-hmm. because it goes to the Hellfire droid. The big one. There's smaller Hellfire droids, and then there's the big Technic Hellfire droid. Mm-hmm. They only made that in dark gray. So, in that one set, yeah, never appeared again. There were two of them in that mm-hmm. set, right? It that was, was early, it. early two thousands. You got two of them. I think they go for thirty to forty dollars each, and they are awesome. I mean, it's a gear. That's a Lego gear. In the set, they use it as a wheel, but it's you know Lego dimensions and everything. And I, I, I have seen people use these as gears and in other uh, mocks. I don't know how often you mess with uh, functioning things but Mm -hmm. what would you use an internal tooth line for so i would use it as a because gears the point of a gear is to kind of transfer energy from one point to another so i would use it as like a way to have a gap between two moving parts and just have this be the part in between the two that moves them because if this area is mounted and this area is mounted and they each have a gear system running through it you could have a nice gap where nothing is connected, but mm-hmm. you just see this giant gear moving. And then so something over here is moving because something over here is moving. It's almost right. like a chain link. That's what I always, I, I see that and I think about that. But it's really neat to see something that, that big. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I can't even, do they make a lot of internal tooth gears like this? Or are they all the well, so standard external? Well, so you can use a small round gear here and a small round gear here and therefore transfer the energy um, as a big exterior gear be really and there's there's no other technic connections i mean there's no way to mount this in any way other than have other gears Mm -hmm. on it and i assume that's what they did in that set yeah Mm -hmm. it was on i think it was only at one point on the bottom ish or maybe on the sides so it could roll like that kind of i think that's Mm. the position of the wheel in the set so now, I guess you can use the outside as a tooth yes or no i'm not sure probably could uh, work it out Yeah. yeah But I, I wouldn't know for sure. I haven't experimented that with it too much. Knowing Lego, Look I'm how sure you can. That yeah. is. In fact, while we're <laughs> while we're talking about it, there's another one, and that's from the XO Four set. Yes, you got two of these, and they were big wheels on a vehicle, mm-hmm. and I, those work. Yep. Those so actually you, you work. Get a really wide, wild, you see, that's, uh, that's it. Doesn't work, but it's close. Mm-hmm. So it fits within that other one. That's how mm-hmm. big it is. It's now this one is is a little nicer because you've got Technic pin. Mm-hmm. holes in there. This right here doesn't come with it, right? That's just extra pieces snapped That's, in there. Okay. Yeah. In the lime green. A nice yeah. color, too. Wasn't the lime green famous for breaking? Didn't Onhill tell us that the, the oh, lime figures... From the Bionicle series in particular, yeah, yes, for this, sure. This okay. is a different type of plastic, though. You oh, can it tell is. Just, can't you tell by touching it? It's it doesn't funny. have the Lego shine to it. It's almost it. a little mm-hmm. softer and yeah. uh, smoother. but That just looks cool. Mm. Like... I don't know, Overwatch or, or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Like like you could put that on a chest plate. Yes, know? that's our next t-shirt. Yeah, it's exactly. It's just that, nothing else. Both very rare, both from one set, pretty neat stuff. Yeah, again, guess. all these one-off kind of things, for and sure. then never again. You know, what's really funny is they made this one part just for Exoforce. Yeah, and that's and the only time we've seen it. Exoforce wasn't even like a licensed theme. It wasn't a really big and popular theme. Yeah, it was just kind of there. And I love Exoforce, don't get me wrong, it's, but it just wasn't cool, that but... big of a theme. Yeah. And they invested a lot into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You couldn't talk about rare pieces without bringing up monorail. So I only have a couple examples of some of the monorail pieces here. Such an iconic piece we have and one in system. The- Those would be the track for a uh, monorail. Here's a cover for the engine. It would just be rolling oh, right yeah. along. And, and that, you, you did a video on that not yes, too long ago. Um, this only came in this color on that set, mm-hmm. on the ma- monorail set, on the airport, transport, or shuttle. Pretty amazing stuff. In fact, that's the sticker mm-hmm. for it. That's the motor cover, I believe. Motor cover, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was just a gear that went down on the track, and that's how it grabbed the track. Buzzed it along, yeah. And the monorail had a lot of rare parts in yeah. it. It had the uh, supports the supports that raised the track up. Mm-hmm. It had the motor itself, mm-hmm. the battery box. The uh, wheels, chest. Those wheels. large curved panels only appeared in those colors in that set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you see curved panels... 
The ones in the monorail are the oversized. They're even bigger than the normal ones. They had the smaller ones too, I think, in white, but or in yellow. I'm reversing it. Mm -hmm. But one of them only came in that color in that set. Yeah, the train one and the old space ones. And then like they only did it for a couple of years, a couple of sets, and then gone. And yeah. people love this stuff yeah. to death. So it, they're super expensive and hard to find. So I we have tons. We have quite a bit of the track. So I just grabbed a couple pieces. We have quite a bit of the track. I don't know if we have any motors or we might we're, even... We're just kind of hoarding it. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we, we used to have it on Bricklink for sale. Mm -hmm. And we sold probably 100 pieces of it. And mm -hmm. actually, the uh, first season of Lego Masters got most of that track. They mm -hmm. probably bought 50 pieces of track from us. Yeah. And you see it in that opening sequence in their the city. first episode, I believe. All that monorail track they had gotten from us. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Lego Masters... <laughs> yeah. I think I saw... Saw somebody I recognized on, on the trailer? on the season two trailer. I did too. Yeah, yeah. He just like um, <laughs> Mark's brother Steven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah or Daniel Radcliffe. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone on our Facebook live stream said that guy looks like Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> I've never gotten that before, ever. So well, you amazing. know what they're going to say? They're going to say, uh, hey, Daniel Radcliffe looks just like Mark Erickson. Yeah, that's what they're eventually going to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be hilarious. So, so yes, uh, Mark is on season two of mm -hmm. the Lego Masters. He can't tell us anything. We don't know anything. He's under an end, a very powerful... Very scary NDA, so he cannot tell us. Look at the trailer, go to the Fox YouTube channel, and look for this guy's face with his brother. They were on Lego Masters Season 2. It's so, gonna be fun. Uh, June 1st. Oh, yes. Tune Watch in. it. Watch nice it. Nice little plug there. Yeah, good. there you go. All right. We might be sitting next to a winner and not even know. Oh, We have no yeah. idea. Well, actually, I won yesterday a golf game I was playing. <laughs> I'm sitting next you to two winners. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, my goodness. I think you're a winner just for being on the show, honestly. That's, yes, that's true. Yeah. It's hard to yeah. get on it's hard to get on that show. Yeah. Period. It's, so, and it's hard to get on a golf course. Let's not, <laughs> I, mean, got, I know you're not anybody can do that. You got to tie your shoes. You have to wear, you a, collar, wear, you have to wear a collared shirt. Yeah. You have to. And I've never seen you in a collared shirt. <laughs> so that was probably really hard for him. Right? It, it would have been a life changing experience just to see him. It was, like, it was so, like bathing a cat. It was under, <laughs> put it on. Honestly, it was under my Atlanta brick coat. <laughs> so you couldn't even see it. But it was there. Isn't there a song about monorail? Probably a rap at this point. I thought it was a Simpsons. Yeah, on Simpsons, um, Phil Hartman sung the monorail song. Okay. <laughs> Must have been the Lego monorail, too. I'm um, sure he was talking about it. This one is near and dear to my heart. Oh, yeah. Of course, most printed pieces are going to be relatively rare. It's a heart. They're yuck, yuck. Printed, <laughs> they're printed for a reason. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting rare piece because... So it's, it's a heart printed on a dark red... It's a dark red heart. Printed on a dark red brown brick, yeah. brown one by one brick, very hard to see. So this is going to get thrown in when you're sorting. It's going to get thrown in with all your one by one round bricks, and you might even use it and just turn it around so you don't see the heart. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a hard one to find because it gets lost so easy and it's so hard to see. Mark, you want to guess what this came in? I it, think I know. I, I think I know because it's in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Though I believe it's the yeah. Water Wheel dual set. Yeah, yeah. It's Davy Jones's heart. Yeah, right. Somebody's heart. It, yeah, somebody's heart. And what's also interesting is they reused it in that set or in the Monster Fighters set. It was in, the, I think, the Haunted Mansion. That's cool. And uh, you don't see that a printed part so specific like that being mm -hmm. used in two different sets, they especially when away. it's a licensed one. Usually those yeah. licensed parts stay in that license yeah, no set. other use so, for them but yeah but that still is even though it was in two sets it's still really hard to find because it gets lost so easy mm -hmm. and what a cool gory thing that lego doesn't usually do <laughs> yeah. this is so that's awesome that's pretty nasty for lego honestly that's, yeah. that's yeah. i thought the lego heart would look like a brick or something it'd be more blocky or like cartoony know. but that's like yeah. really anatomically looking yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah i guess they had to make it look like the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Is that an expensive piece? Probably a couple bucks is my guess. I don't yeah. know. I, I'd have to look it up to know for sure. It won't break your bank to get it, yeah. but it's not common. Um, so Chris does have a heart. <laughs> there is proof right there. <laughs> Physical proof of Chris's heart. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. We love you. We love you. <laughs> I would go next with probably Chrome, and you got a bunch of it in front of you. Yeah, there, we got a little bit. This is our... It's part of our chrome hoard. Oh yeah. my goodness. This is probably just seeing this much chrome in one spot is making Lego fans drool right yeah. now. The funny thing is, is Mark and I have seen probably a hundred times this. Really? Before. Where? Yeah. 
at the uh, Brick World Chicago. There was one build that had... might have been 2019 where <sighs> the guy had the des desolation of smog this... and smog was in his treasure hoard. That guy must have bought so much stuff to fill that it up. It was and... like, I don't know, like a TV size three pile. feet yeah. of chrome what? all inside uh, smog's cave. And it was awesome. Well, the chrome gold coins weren't that hard to get. I mean, you don't get they them anymore. They're super rare, but they're harder to find now. They're, they're hard to, not only are they hard to find, but they, they're not, they're so tiny mm -hmm. that to fill up yeah. that hoard, he had to have so many, but he didn't just use the coins, he used the helmet, the mm -hmm. king's helmet, he used the swords, mm -hmm. I mean, anything chrome he could get his hands on. So, so were you guys, a couple bricks, you guys drooling? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That, and it was a castle scene and it, a dragon it's Such scene. a great, impressive use of that, those yeah. weird, unusual pieces. I think I even saw Benedict Cumberbatch in there. <laughs> yeah. Or heard him, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this isn't necessarily chrome gold, this is more chrome silver. That's from the rare Star Wars Naboo fighter. UCS wow. one. Mm -hmm. A lot of those pieces are from that. And then you got the Rock Raiders drill. That's from the early 2000s again. Mm -hmm. So great stuff. Yep. And Lego does not chrome pieces anymore, pretty much at all, because it's difficult and expensive to do and because it chips off easily. So in order to make their pieces more durable, they just kind of have the plastic be you know, like a pearl or metallic mm -hmm. color. And it's, it's nothing surface because this is all like the inside of that brick is tan, but it's chrome on the outside. So it's interesting. And we talked about works. that in our uh, vodcast about cars uh, mm -hmm. when we were talking about chroming things the, the and how difficult and stuff, it is. Yeah. The, yeah. The one chrome piece that they actually did recently was Dooku, I learned. Yeah, though. That's Dooku's the, lightsaber hilt. They mm -hmm. keep, you know, the last time they came out with him, which was 2000. Or even the ring 12, from Lord of the Rings maybe. is a chrome. Oh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's too, about okay. the same time. Yeah, about the same time. Yeah. Look yeah. at this a chrome wedge plate. <laughs> Yeah, that's also, from the Starfighter as mm -hmm. well, I think. What? What? It's so shiny. I know. And of course, the swords. When these swords get bent, they just oh. the chrome just comes right off. They rip right off. And even the handles will get yeah. chipped off by the hands after a while, too. So. And in fact, they had the chrome gold C-3PO. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this applied to Mr. Gold or not, either. But the chrome gold C-3PO looks terrible. When you move his arms, yeah, there's they, open you areas. You see the open area where they didn't chrome, mm -hmm. so they just sprayed right over his arm. Yeah, they kind of have to. I yeah. mean, you can't have the whole surface chrome like that. The helmets are gorgeous. What would you call this one? Uh, the, the middle is. That's an exhaust, but see, it's been completely chipped off everywhere Look, it's else. It's actually a clear piece. It's, it's trans totally clear. translucent. Yeah. I've I've never actually seen one where somebody took was, all the chrome off. Yeah, that's like it was almost it's intentionally pretty. removed or cleaned off. So, and you do see a lot of Mega Box chrome stuff too. Like yeah. that's a Mega Box piece right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we just throw it in there with our chrome because it's even though it's Mega Box, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So you had chrome gold, you have chrome silver, and then you have this one that's kind of in between, like these old ninja samurai. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a chrome. I, think, I would what say do you it's a gold, it? but it's a kind of a silvery gold. Or maybe even a white gold. What's the that in jewelry? So. What's the official Lego name? I think it's that? actually or called chrome gold because it's just a little warmer yeah. than a silver. So. Okay. Yeah. Does Bricklink make a distinction between the chrome gold and that chrome gold, and then the chrome gold coins that I look true yellow? I don't think so. I, I think it's think so, the yeah. same chrome okay. gold, which is too bad because it's kind of different shades for different color yeah. pieces. Chrome silver. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. When will you ever see these two things together? Now, explain how you got these. Yeah, so they, those originally came in the, uh, I think it was the 25th anniversary set from 1998. It, was, it would have come in a tub of basic bricks and pieces, and it was kind of like a little celebration. They even did one for the 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the later. gold came in, right? Yeah, the gold bricks, which, which I think you got one there next to you, Chris, if that's the right one. This, oh, is, that's, this one okay. here is the metallic gold, yeah. which they only came in creator yeah, like the, it was the top just of a, Lego, yeah. Top of Lego, and... So they, these came in the 25th. Yeah, so that would have been 98, and these would have... Or, yeah, 25th, and that one might be... I'll have to double-check the year. This it might have been the 50th? 50th or 40th, I'm not even sure. Mm -hmm. But um, We've got them sealed upstairs. We have those set sealed. That came in that huge hall. All they are is... the the. It's a black box, and it's a creator set. It's just a basic set, but it's got that one of those bricks in there. Mm -hmm. It makes it $250 sealed. 
It's just yeah. a rare, rare thing to have. And they didn't go with the chrome gold. They went mm -hmm. with the spray painted style. Yeah. Also applied over a brick though. So it's it's kind of the same concept, but it's not chrome. Because um, the inside isn't as shiny as the outside. They, they did mostly working on the outside for these guys. So. Now, why do these look different? Has this just been yellowed or aged? Actually, if you look on the inside, one is gray and one is tan. So that might have something to do with what yeah. level of surface. Uh, it, kind of the, the tint is exposed a little, maybe. I don't know. So very. But they came in the same so. they, way. They would have come in the same time frame, for sure. Okay. Yeah, so. Did the gray one come in some and the tan come in another? Probably the case. Because okay. they did a couple different variants of that set. So, yeah. Can, can you actually stack on you them? Can. Or will they I wouldn't know, the, because they might chip, chip off. You can, but it, it's probably going to hold its value better if you don't. Okay. Yeah. It, eventually, it will chip off. Yeah. You got chrome keys and oh! Harry Potter. And those are kind of like, a, they might be called antique brass That's or something. That's the color, yeah. yeah. Because they have more uh, darker tones. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. I've never seen these. You've never seen them? Oh Justin? my That's goodness. That's really cool This is from color. an old Harry Potter yes, set? Yes. Some of the original Harry Potter sets had those in there. Are these expensive? Uh, yeah, pretty expensive, yeah. Yeah, they're more expensive than a regular key. Maybe a buck or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is gorgeous. It's You're going to have to buy that later, yeah. Justin. Yeah. Oh, my. Because it is antique. Like, the, the chrome is smudged, and then yeah. all the grooves the are black. The Potter sets came with those. You know, Hagrid, Hagrid carried them around. Mm -hmm. And then there's the uh, cool uh, Dragon Knight's helmet that's mm -hmm. in chrome. chrome. That was like a... They had one of those pieces in one set, and then they had, like, the shield and the sword in another set. Oh, so that's right. Diversifying I, the castle line. I remember from our castle uh, podcast, mm -hmm. we talked about the Bull Knights. Yes. Had exactly. the super armor. <laughs> Exactly. You've got your chrome lightsaber hilts, which yeah, those were uh, are only a buck or two. They you made know, a, a couple of them, that's I'm why. I'm surprised uh, they haven't gone up faster, but mm -hmm. these, I would invest in these. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to go up. I don't think Lego's going to make them again, and no. then everybody's going to go back and be like, whoa, I can get a chrome lightsaber hilt? Mm -hmm. Sign me up. And it costs a lot of money to chrome. I have a friend that does it, and... It, it's expensive. He would have to sell these for six bucks each because mm -hmm. it costs them so much money to chrome. Yeah, the, the physical manual mm -hmm. process is difficult. You got your gems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A right very there. special color. What, what set was that in, Mark? I believe it was the old City Space sets. It had those in some of the sets. Like, it was like an asteroid that had a mm -hmm. core of this chrome green crystals. Really neat. Isn't Very special. I was reading a book one time, and I think it said that that was the rarest color yeah. that Lego made because it only came only came in that, on that, that gem. That, this that, is the that. only piece yeah. in chrome yeah. green there ever. Isn't. And the silver one came in the Aqua Zone sets, some of the earlier mm -hmm. 90s as well. So. Along with those little chrome arrows. Yeah. These are really common. Those actually. underwater sets were really yeah. cool because of those chrome pieces in them. They were very neat. So. But yeah, that, that chrome green is super cool. This one's also in really good condition. Sometimes they're a little beat mm -hmm. up. Like this one's a little bit scuffed. But uh, that. How much awesome. is this? Kind of expensive. Ten bucks? Five to ten. Maybe. Yeah, I would say in that price yeah. range. I would hope hope to get one for like seven or eight. So. And something else that is chrome and rare, and I, we might have them in here, but I don't think so. They're the uh, just one by one round plates studs. Oh yeah, I've seen those as well. They're yeah, really those neat. only came in a couple Harry Potter sets. Mm -hmm. The gold came in one Harry Potter set, and then they made an antique brass stud in the Durmstrom ship. I think Ed was telling us chroming plastic. You have to do a different technique to yeah. it. It's very difficult. Heat. It's tricky, and, it, and it's, it's very fragile. It chips off, like you said before, so it's just to get them in nice condition is so fun. Ooh, there we go. Chrome stud. Perfect. Right there. That is nice. Here's the Adventurer tablet. Yeah. I love yeah. those guys. Those are so much fun. What's so neat about that Adventurer's tablet is the, the Mayans and the Aztecs were known for their gold, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then the Spanish came and they took it all. And this is just the perfect example of that. I mm -hmm. mean, it's a, it's like something you'd find in the uh, exactly. Guatemalan jungle. Little yeah. skull face with wouldn't gems. Wouldn't that be yeah. neat to go to the Guatemalan jungle and find one of these Lego <laughs> yeah. pieces? I mean, I want to take it. I think that's, that's about all we got for the chrome pieces. You've got that metallic <laughs> door frame, which kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, so that's that kind of goes with that brick. It's a similar color to that brick over there. So this is considered metallic, not chrome. Chrome. Yes, although it's painted on kind of application, so it is similar to the chrome pieces, but it's more size uh, mirrored. And this only came in the architecture Dubai? That's correct. That's okay. what we've been told from Angie, and she knows her sets, so <laughs> yeah. yes. Never again. 
Yeah, probably not just because of the uh, process. I, I wonder if one-off things like this are easier for them because they're not making a new plastic color. They're just spraying it on over the plastic. So I yeah. wonder if this is cheaper and easier. It's just a paint. So, yeah. I do know that when they're making pieces in the factory, once they're molded, they go right into these big buckets and then they're shipped out to packaging. However, if they have to apply an extra layer, it's an extra whole step. They have to get those pieces to another place to apply that. So I think it's mm. actually probably more expensive than to just put in some gold plastic, really? mold that okay. piece, and uh, make it that way. So it's touched by at least three more times. Yeah, least. exactly. Got it. So, okay. there's, there's you gotta a, move it to there, you gotta spray it, and then move it to here. Yeah. So instead of just making it and shipping it, they're making it, printing on it, and then shipping on it. So it's like it's it's an extra couple steps to get it all the way through that. So I, I don't think you'll see too many more sprayed on, printed on, metallic colored pieces like that. So. Are these type of paint applications more durable than the chrome? A little bit better than chrome because chrome is like a, a thicker layer. This is more like a, a paint versus like chrome is almost like a little chippable layer. This is a little bit more. You can rub it off eventually, but it doesn't like come off in chunks. I'm I've like, actually not seen these in bad condition like yeah. I have the chrome. Yeah. You see the chrome in bad condition. This, these are usually in better condition. Yeah. A little more durable, but yeah. still eventually it'll start to, to scratch and chip on the, or not chip, um, kind of get worn out mm -hmm. a little bit. So. Is this a newer technique or have they been doing this for years? It's newer than chrome, time, yeah. but uh, it's not, it's, it hasn't been done in the past few years as far as I, even and, and, this is like four or five years. Yeah. Ago. So, I, and mm -hmm. I don't think we'll be seeing too many more in the future either, just because of the process. They did put them in city sets though. Yeah. They've a couple got the of them. little statue from Indiana Jones. Yep. That was a pretty really cool. And that's expensive. That's yeah, like 20, 30. And it's sprayed gold. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. sprayed gold. Then you've got a gold dinosaur. Yeah. From Adventures. Uh, um, it, it might have been from Agents, actually. Was it Agents or Adventures? Yeah, you're yeah. right, Agents. Yeah. Well, Agents. Justin's got this uh, oh, yeah, let's big do bin of I always talk about sand, sand colors. <laughs> Here it is. I always heard this was the rarest color, but you said it was actually chrome green because it's one piece, one set, ever. Oh, yeah. yeah. But of the this, same colors, this is by far the rarest. Of too. the same colors, this is completely out of print, has been for years. The last time we saw it was... Harry Potter, I think, or Mars Mission. Uh, same era, 2002, 2000. 90% uh, of these came from the Mars missions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sand red. A lot of, lot of adult Lego fans love the sand colors. It's such a unique variation of colors. We get lots of sand green now, mm -hmm. but that's kind of it. Occasionally you'll see sand blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sand blue and sand green are still being produced, but they haven't made any sand red or sand purple, but there was a lot more sand purple made in larger sets. So it's not as rare as the sand red, in my opinion. And we've got all sorts of pieces. Look at this. I mean, I don't even recognize that piece. It's a windscreen. Mm -hmm. From the Mars mission vehicle. Sets from True. 1999. Uh, I think the Dooku Yoda battle had one. Yep. Dooku speeder had yep. some sand red on it. And well, even in the, the droids were this color. Yeah, the, the Geno Genosians. As a mock master, what would you use like sand red for? Okay. Just I have a lot of uses for this. Oh, I actually okay. have uh, a little more than this at home. And because uh, I've been slowly hoarding <laughs> yeah. it over the years from here. But uh, these guys make great columns. And there are columns this exact color in Rome in front of the Pantheon. Mm -hmm. Very weird shade of like this kind of uh, almost a salmon color. So this is actually a really good color for this type of piece, this type of application. I'm also looking at these plates. This kind of looks like the surface of Mars or some other uh, earthy um, clay material. And it's such a cool looking color, it's such a rare color. It's fun to see this used in creations. So, and then like these guys, I use these guys as pavers or uh, pathways all the time. So a couple of these and it looks awesome. But you're forced to use them sparingly. Yeah, I, I don't have that many. So um, it's very, very I, every piece I have in sand red, I'm usually trying to sneak in there at some point just because it looks so cool. So. so of all the colors, and maybe I should ask this again at the end, is this the color you wish they would bring back? Just to a certain extent, because then you could see it more often. It's a, th these colors work great for su uh, certain very particular cool things. So I would love to see it again. At the same time, because it's rare, it also is special and fun. Got so it. it's like if they didn't make it again, I wouldn't be that upset. It's just we wouldn't be able to use lots of it. So You mentioned some very specific uses, like the Pantheon. I almost said Parthenon. Yeah. The Pantheon so, um, surface of Mars. Mm -hmm. In general, do you think they don't produce this because it's not a usable color in, in a broader sense? Yeah, I think it's just, it, well, this is one of the colors that got 
cut in the end of 2003 when they had to restructure. And uh, also teal and a few other colors were just gone. You know, they just stopped making them. And so they have actually brought back a couple of these colors since then. Teal is not back in production as of the... Uh, the diner and a few other sets mm -hmm. and that's very very close not exactly but they're trying to uh, replicate the old teal from like mm -hmm. the rock graders of the 2000s mm -hmm. and like 99 so you it's not out of the question whether they could bring this back or not it probably wouldn't be too hard at this point for them because they're doing better it's just they haven't decided yeah. to do it yet so and we don't mention friends a lot but friends has almost its own palette yeah it's it's Tons of so colors. different mm -hmm. um but they don't produce a lot of standard pieces in a those few, not colors. too many yeah it, it's kind of, kind of rare but yeah. yeah sand red that's all we got <laughs> i i had heard that one of the reasons they stopped making this color is in order to get the that specific color they had to use the blood of panda bears and panda bears were becoming i heard that too extinct and they it, weren't able to use that them. makes a lot of sense they're, considering they're actually not endangered anymore they yeah. went to endangered to vulnerable yeah. So that means that because they stopped making sandwich pieces, panda bears are making a comeback. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. You only hear it here, folks. Yeah, that's amazing. That is amazing. That's wow. really good. They're not on the I saw stuff. something on Instagram. I don't know how accurate that's it is, but fantastic. somebody's. I, I love panda bears. I know. I mean, I'm so they're bad. So, they're, they're delicious. So <laughs> yeah. I love them too. We we're getting flagged so hard. We can't put any of this on the show anymore. While we are uh, talking about sand colors, there's we have a sealed bag here, and we get a lot of sealed bags in, and that's a really interesting looking sealed bag. You've got dark red in there. You've got all these neat colored heads. There's brown heads. They're all blank heads too. There's uh, what do you call that other? Kind of like flesh. a medium dark flesh. I don't know what the term uh, for it anymore is, but it's kind of like a tan it is. color. Yeah. Um, is that dark the purple? Darker flesh. Old purple, yeah. That's like old dark purple. Mm -hmm. That's not a normal green. That's bright green. Bright like. green, I think. Mm -hmm. And then you've got one sand blue head in there. I there think. it is. Yeah. That's so strange. And then you've got an old gun in there. So when I found this bag, I was, I was like, oh wow, this is awesome. I mean, it was like. 30 heads in there, mm -hmm. all colors. rare colors. There's a gun in there. I was like, this is something very, very special. And I was so disappointed when I found out what it came from. Mark, did I tell you what it came no, from? No, I don't even you know. Want I guess? want to know. No, I have, I have absolutely you can't no idea. Guess. It's impossible. I have no idea. It, it's from some totally random creator set. In, That's so no, disappointing. No, no, in a classic set. Okay, yeah. In 2004. Mm-hmm. And it was just a small box, so it probably was like ten bucks. Yeah. So and it's just weird. It's strange. it's just a bunch of stuff that they gave you, <laughs> and that sand blue head only came in that set. Yeah. And wow. it, so this should be super super rare, and it it is super super rare. Don't get me wrong, but that sand blue head is fifty cents. Yeah. And people have them in bulk on Bricklink. So people have them for like, they have 50 of them, they have 100 of them. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do you get 50 to 100 of that part? So what could have happened is it could have been on the wall at, at oh, yeah. the pick-a-brick wall oh, at the Lego, Lego store stores. or something like that because it was in a classic set or mm -hmm. creator set. So yeah. somehow the market did get flooded with that rare part. You know what that almost suggests to me, and I'm this is like reading between the lines or reading into it, but that those heads would have been the same color as the heads in the basketball players. Yeah. And I'm yeah. thinking maybe they just had tubs of extra heads and they weren't they in had the license exactly. anymore or something and they just like yeah. get them out. Have unprinted sand blue head. Yeah. Nice. Look at that yellow. That that's a light yellow. That's another strange uh, tile thing. in there. So this is a really... And just one tile. So random. I, like, lo I love this bag, but it's not as valuable as it yeah. you would think. And I just kind of hold on to it and keep it on my desk. What do you have for us All next? Right, so we had this big brick. It looks like a plate, but it's actually a brick thick. I remember looking up, what is the single, single largest brick Lego has ever made? It's this, and this is a what? It said on Bricklink that it's 12 by 24, which is a very weird size, but that's what it says. Probably could count it. Just a huge, unusual brick. And it only came in a couple sets. Um, I think it came in a Knights nice Kingdom 2 castle. It came in the 2005 Sandcrawler. And as far as I can tell, it also came in the Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets. All from the early 2000s. 
Yep. Of course. <laughs> 12 by 24. That's odd to me that that came in the sand crawler. Yeah. From, from I didn't know that. I, I had no idea. I guess the floor. It's and part of the floor. to make it a solid floor, they used a brick instead of a plate, mm -hmm. you know, or multiple plates. It has some uses like that. I know in, yeah. in the Knights of Kingdom 2 Castle, which is one of the sets that I had, it just fits right in the big raised base plate. That's got to be why it's this odd size. It must be. Because it fits so perfectly. Now, this probably went out with that base plate, I assume. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only is it ex expensive, because it's a ginormous single piece, but it probably only fit that very specific need. Yeah. And once raised pl base plates went away, yeah. there was no need for this. Nope. Again, as a mock maker, would you use something like this for floor levels, or do you prefer plates? So using a brick would be much more useful in certain situations, especially if you're trying to get the, the height just right. Like if you're counting how many bricks it is before you do something, like a different pattern or something, having a brick floor would be easier than using a plate floor. However, it's very easy to just stick a couple more plates in the bottom to make it as thick as a brick. So okay. if this is harder to produce than a plate of the same size, then it's not worth it because you can just get the plate, add two two by 12 plates on the edges, and then it's as thick as a brick and you don't need to worry about it. So it's really cool, but at the same time, the existence of plates makes it somewhat obsolete if you go for okay. a specific thing like that. So. But structurally, it's pretty it sturdy. would help in certain situations, especially if your supports were way on the corner and you mm -hmm. didn't have to plate it up to yeah. add support. Wouldn't this have an advantage if you had to have a bridge or something where you needed a lot of minimal structure mm -hmm. under that? Or kind do you think of. you could do that with plates just as easily? So interestingly, when you're talking about lateral strength, mm -hmm. bricks comes to mind, but at the same time, plates are thinner. So you're getting three times as much clutch power per area as a brick. Okay. So if you use plates in that same area, it's not only th like basically three times as heavy, but it's also way stronger in grip. So okay. it's, it's really interesting how that works, but plates are way stronger when it come into that <clears throat> lateral strength. So yeah. I think a good example of that is on season one of Lego Masters when they made the bridge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tyler's bridge defied gravity, ar architectural engineering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, whereas Boone's was more of the technic. It had stuff going it? underneath. And, and then Aaron and Christian also had the technic, that uh, was big the technic suspension. One. I mean, when I think of a bridge, first thing I would think of is technic. Yeah. yeah. I would never have thought to do with the way Tyler did it. I mean, that was absolutely insane. But it, I would say in certain uses for sure, but most of the time a plate is actually better. So it's yeah. interesting. Are plates machined to have a higher clutch power or are they the same? I feel like they do, but it might just be the fact that you have a larger gap on the inside. There's way more room than the studs need under that brick. But if you go to like a plate, like here's a few examples, there's only as much as you need for that stud. Mm -hmm. And it basically goes flush up to the ceiling. It's more of a tight fit versus like, if you have a, a bolt that has a bunch of room, it's gonna wobble more versus Two fitting. plates are definitely harder to get apart. That's what I think. Bricks. So yeah. I'm wondering if bricks you have more space, hollow space above the studs, which causes flexibility mm -hmm. to get, get it off. Yeah, you could probably Google that and find out. But yeah. well, there's more to grab too. Yeah. To peel off. Mm -hmm. um, In general. Yeah. I, it always felt to me that these are actually machined to have a tighter fit. If somebody knows, let, let us know in the comments. Yeah. yeah. Back to Tyler's Bridge, I remember that I felt like even the judges were like, oh, you can't build a non-technic bridge. What are you, <laughs> yeah. you are you crazy? Yeah. I awesome. feel like he Simpleton. was, yeah, and he was, when they asked him, he was just like, hmm, no, non-technic, no, I'm just gonna, he was totally cool with that. And when we talked yeah. to him, he said, no, I didn't, I'd never do any, really done anything that big before. I didn't know it was going to hold. It, it was like the scientist who discovered penicillin by accident. He yeah. gave <laughs> the world this amazing discovery by accident. Yeah. <laughs> so it was crazy. In a fantasy world where these are just as common as plates, you would still probably prefer plates. A little more plates if I was going for strength, but I would use these guys as convenience of being a brick thick and I don't have to stack more plates. Yeah, okay. It seems like for large landscapes, this oh, yeah. would be a good... I have like one or two of these at home and I always use them just because it's a big volume piece it's and just a, stick it in there. And it's a time saver. Yeah. Yeah, Huge that's what I'm thinking. Saver. If you want to yeah. build a little hillock or whatever, <laughs> Put that slope yeah. as your, as yeah. your start. <laughs> For sure. All right. So didn't this come in an odd color? Yeah. It came in some dark grays and greens and also this really light violet is that on Bricklink is what they call it. And it came in a big scala set. It was like the base for a nursery. 
the Scala, Belleville, yeah. that whole, again, the rare pieces that mm-hmm. they were making in the late but, 90s, early 2000s exactly. that they just got rid of because it wasn't making them yeah. you know, money. Yeah. It was a bad business decision. And you've got a whole bucket of those. Yeah, we'll odd, get into that in just a second. But yeah. Those odd pieces sitting there. <laughs> Big, um, weird pieces. Before we leave that, what is the current largest single regular brick that they make right now? Um, I know they probably still make, it's like a 4 by 6 4 by 8, 4 by 10, yeah. that you actually see in sets. Yeah, speaking of Scala and Belleville, I've got a bucket of pieces here. I was gathering from those teams just because they were so far out and strange that I couldn't help it. We've got a couple examples here. We, do, we can kind of lump all of these in together. Yeah, might as well for convenience sake. Let me that, that is nothing. I'm just holding a bunch of bizarrely rare pieces in my hand. <laughs> Just a bundle of weird things. They were the same set. Yeah. They were all in the same set. Yeah. It was this, actually, it was this set, uh, set number 5824. Doesn't have a title on there, but it looks like a little fairy shrine, (laughs) for lack of a better word, a a fairy pagoda. Yeah. This is not your typical insert for a, um, yeah. What do you call that? No, they did use that on pirate ships too, right? The yellow ones. Yeah. They they had yellow ones for pirate ships. Um, and I think they even had them in sets like Fabuland and mm-hmm. other weird ones. So that's like almost like a throwback for back then. So it's pretty unusual to see that. And they make something like this now, but it's not quite the same. It doesn't it's, have this... Yeah, it's quite different. And this is actually, I think, cooler than the new ones because it doesn't have any plate on the bottom for support. It just sits on those one, two stud areas. And uh, for that reason, I think it's more versatile. You know, you can use it for more uh, purposes like this. So. And uh, this isn't trans pink, that's trans sparkly pink. Yeah, exactly. It has little bits of uh, sparkles mixed into they the might plastic. They call it speckled. Speckled, yeah. I don't know. I like sparkle better. I, it, it's feels... very sparkly, so yeah. One piece that I like on that is that little flower on the top. It's kind of like that minty green, as well as the base plate brick. It's also that kind yeah. of mint green. I don't even know what the actual color name is on Bricklink, but it's not made anymore. Very light green maybe, yeah. or something like that. Dark pink yeah. pot yeah. piece. Yeah. And a blue basket. Mm-hmm. Other than this trans neon stud. Neon stud and the cone, everything I'm holding in my hand. Oh, and maybe the, the blue the gems. The blue backpack's not that oh, rare. Oh, it's super rare. It, it was in um, a Spider Man set back then. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. And look at that butterfly piece. Yep. That's Is that a, a normal uh, pattern? Precursor to the Friends little oh, attachment yeah. pieces. Yeah, in, in fact, his little... piece doesn't even look like Lego. I'd a say sprue. that's pretty rare. There's a sprue for some of those pieces. Oh, wow. And the sprue is heart-shaped. Look of course. At that. It almost looks like you could turn it into a necklace. It's got that hole up there. I so, bet it was. Yeah. I bet you that was part oh. of the design. So you can put your, uh, your bow on stuff, too. Oh, and that fairy godmother is super, super yeah, rare. Yeah, one piece. You can stick yeah. these little wings on her, too. It's so that, unusual. One of the things that makes stuff like this so rare, it does not look like Lego. No. And so people throw it away. It looks a lot like a, a doll from the mm-hmm. era. You know, it's just, it's a little... They're not always that expensive, though, because there's not a high demand for that. No, um, it's probably not super valuable. What but... I really liked about these sets are those big snails. Yeah, we those are cool. They're real. Those are popular. Yeah. We don't have any, but there's big snails about that big, and they're like two pieces. Mm-hmm. And like here's a basket from that era as well. It's almost like a trough. You don't see that very often. Here's a box. It's almost the same plastic as the old school books, and it opens up. Stuff you'll never ever see again, you know. <laughs> and you know, for being so rare, it's this stuff's not super expensive. Yeah. Like this whole set, this is a complete set right here. I mean, thirty bucks. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Thirty dollars, forty dollars, and um, for a complete set of super rare pieces. Each piece is probably two to five dollars. You know, mm-hmm. not crazy. And then like here's a clear treasure chest. That came in Harry Potter as well, but it also was a Belleville piece. And it's like, it's the same mold as the old pirate ones and the new ones that, that are kind of the uh, nougat color. And th- these are just like, it's like a diamond treasure chest. It's so cool looking. Or glass treasure mm-hmm. chest. What would you use a sparkly speckled <laughs> roof for? So I actually, and just looking at that, I would look at like a spaceship windscreen because of the shape. You can get super creative with that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, I have trouble matching it with anything. Because there's nothing, <laughs> it's just yeah. you don't see pieces that color. So. Is that dark pink or is that regular pink? Kind of like a uh, trans dark pink, I think, is the oh, color. Right. This, I could see this as being a good minifigures dress. Yeah. 
just really elaborate legs yeah. for a minifigure. That would be cool too, like yeah. some sort of fancy character. Yeah. It's interesting, this weird, what do you call these figures? The little do they fairy? have a name? Um, it's a Belleville fairy mini doll, I think, or something oh, right. like that. I think they call them dolls. Yeah. What, the way it attaches the studs is it goes in between yeah. so that they could keep the tiny little legs. Like a lot of old Lego feet. animals. Do oh, that. the Lego animals did that? A lot of older Lego animals kind of fit weirdly in the studs. So Can it's. Test uh... it? <laughs> hey, there you go. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah the, they the don't, clutch power they isn't there anymore. They don't have as good clutch power. Okay, so a few other old Belleville pieces. These are from also Belleville, but they're from a sub theme called Golden Land, which is a unusual name, but it was kind of like this Middle Eastern fairy tale, almost like um, Aladdin, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they, were, they have this really dark pink color. And those those pieces they're called the onion domes. That's just a nickname. Right? Yeah, the term for them on brick. Okay, that's that. Yeah, and they got like four studs on the top, and they, they have this rounded bottom, and they're really unusual. I think if you put two one on top of the other, it'd make a cool hourglass because it's like almost the perfect shape. And, oh wow! Uh, yeah, it's just such a weird piece. And uh, here's a, like a trellis or a fence from the same line. That was this is a Scala one or is yeah, this it, it, it's Belva. It would have gone with oh, this as well. It would have like been in the same set. I mean, oh. We don't have the rest of the set, but we have these weird pieces from it. So, yeah. So we have a bunch of those in white, don't we? Yes, and I brought these as well. And so that kind of okay. it, from the same time frame, but from a different set. These were from the Adventurers Orient Expedition. This would have been like the Indian Maharaja's Palace uh, set. I think it was a Scorpion Palace or Scorpion Temple. These seem way more useful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So that is more historically ac accurate color. They would have been. Uh, you don't see these big pink domes everywhere, you know. So, but um, that is pretty neat, and pretty useful. I have, I think, one of those. I don't have the pink ones. So. Are these expensive? They should be. I think they're at least they, ten dollars each. They should be more expensive than they are. Yeah. Because they are so useful if you're doing mm -hmm. a scene from the Middle East. Yeah. Five to ten dollars, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But you really don't see them too often. Yeah, you just, it's one of those pieces you're not going to find hundreds of on a, a yeah. listing anywhere. So. The white one is more common, though, or not? Um, they're I think just they're about rare. the same because the Belleville ones were weird. There's and definitely this more weird. demand for it. Yeah. There's not a very high demand for these. In tan, it only came in that one. Yeah. It's, it's really only a couple bucks. Mm -hmm. It was a small set. And it's not that useful. Yeah, it's very specific. Where did these guys go? Ah, I killed a fairy again. What's next, gentlemen? Well, we have got some parts that only, from what I understand, only master builders can get. So you can request if a master builder needs a two by six plate in trans light blue, mm -hmm. they can order them from Lego. And if Lego wants to make it for them, they say, yeah, we could do that. Then they'll make them for them. 2x6 plate and translite blue. Last time I checked, this was never in a Lego set. Yeah, as of making the video. <laughs> and we go to conventions all the, over the country, and we come across pieces like this, also trans red in 2x6. And last I checked, they weren't on BrickLink, but we've given these out for free as like tours when we give tours and stuff at the store we'll give somebody one of these as like a parting gift so if they put one on it might be on bricklink but last i checked they weren't on there could you explain what you mean by master builder as someone who actually works for lego building the large models like in the parks or something in the parks they do it corporately as well for yeah. events and stuff like that back in 2013 i think it was they made the 9343 x-wing mm -hmm. in times square yeah life-size x-wing out of lego that was cool i'm assuming it was a master builder who ordered the parts directly from lego okay and so on occasion they can request things that don't exist that don't exist in certain okay. colors. And yeah. then what happens is that something fell off the truck and someone puts it on BrickLink and it gets yeah. circulated to the public? Yeah, actually, we've needed certain pieces before in certain colors, and it's like, I don't even know if it exists, but let's go on BrickLink and see if it exists. And sure enough, somebody in Europe, usually it seems to be in Europe, mm -hmm. and that makes sense because that's where a lot of these might be made. Mm -hmm. uh, they have them, and they're very expensive, but we only need a couple. We have had this piece. It's just all it is is a one-by-one -one plate with a clip on the side, horizontal. And that is $3 for Why that is little that? thing because a master builder ordered it. I'm assuming it, and I'm just, this is all speculation. I'm just assuming a master builder had ordered this part to be used in a model that he was making, and he had leftovers, and we got a hold of it somehow. 
<laughs> so you're telling me a dark reddish brown, one by one modified. Not, not dark, just a oh, reddish brown. Reddish brown modified with horizontal clip. Yep, that tiny. Does little not thing. exist. In any Lego set ever. Yeah, they never put it in a Lego set. Some master builder ordered them for a special project, and, and then we got a hold of it at a convention that we go to. Huh, okay. Yeah. So once it's on the market, then it's fair game, yeah. whether and we're we supposed do, to have it or not. We've got a number of these, and we do sell them at, on Brickland. Oh, wow. These we don't. Those are too cool. <laughs> yeah, these are neat. Those and are special. I saw some in that same bin that we keep these in. I saw some regular blue of this. Is that... Also rare, or did that come regular set? trans blue? Tra regular trans, trans dark blue. blue yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I didn't realize those were in there. Yeah, those would have been rare too. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't think yeah. those have been in any, any sets either, as far as I know. Yeah. Wow. Very special. Yeah. Those are special. <laughs> and of course, this this isn't expert knowledge. This is speculation. Speculation. Yeah. So I don't know this. But this but is Lego. We know yes. this is Lego, and we yeah. know neither of these have ever come in a set ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So unless you go on Bricklink and someone happens to be selling it. You do not own this unless you're us. That's your Atlanta Brick Co. <laughs> then well, you're, like I said, special. if you go yeah. on Bricklink, there's a lot of there are a lot of people who have odd stuff like this. Mm -hmm. There's a seller in Washington, the state of Washington in America, that gets uh, misprinted Lego parts, mm -hmm. and they sell them on in bulk. You know, they have a thousand of this head, and it's misprints, and they're mm -hmm. selling it for cheaper than normal. Yeah, I mean that's the kind of stuff that you would think that Lego would destroy. Yeah, yeah. you know. But yet, this guy has them. He has some kind of connection or something. He must be dumpster diving behind oh. Legos. <laughs> a, lot of those, a lot of those odd parts like that, that you're getting in bulk, like a thousand Deadpools, you know, a thousand oh, yeah. of this rare figure, those are originating in California. And mm -hmm. I'm guessing because a lot of the product is coming in from China. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a Mexico plant, right? So, or, so it might be from there, too. You never know. So, some of those areas... It fell off the truck. I, yeah. I had a friend call me one time, and he's in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. This is right before Scooby-Doo came out. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've got a lead on all these Scooby-Doo minifigures, and we can get them before the figures come out. And they're $5 each, which actually was too much money to pay for them, honestly. Yeah. Because they just came out a couple months later, yeah. and they were cheap, relatively cheap for a while. For a while, yeah. So he he got half, I got half, a couple hundred figures, and I was looking at them, and they had like chips in them, oh. and some of them were glued back together, and they were all damaged. Mm -hmm. And he he said he got them from a guy in Mexico, mm -hmm. and somebody literally i think they literally dumpster dived and got those mm -hmm. <laughs> because they were all garbage i yeah. mean they're just total garbage you know so we ended up throwing them in our build a fig i think because they mm -hmm. were they were chips they were like factory chips machine mm -hmm. made chips and stuff yeah uh, issues with the figure. defects mm -hmm. yeah. so they were quality control and they were thrown to the yeah. side and wow. that was the only time I, I've ever come across something like that. And I, I wouldn't want to come across something like yeah. that again yeah. because they make a habit. It, wasn't it worth didn't it. work out. Yeah. No. That was an expensive builder thing. This one guy last year called us and he said, hey, I live in this city and this city is at a shipping port. All mm -hmm. right. And he bought a container at auction. And in that container was uh, 1999 alien ufo electronic buzzers that came on the lego insectoids insectoid yeah, yeah. sets mm -hmm. yeah and they have they light up and everything and they're sealed cases of thousands and thousands of them and they're, they were made by another company for lego to put in those sets because lego doesn't you know at the time it was around this time, 1999, 2000, mm -hmm. that a lot mm -hmm. of these pieces are coming from. He sold us all of them. Uh, we still we have box, sealed boxes of thousands of these things, mm -hmm. and it it just got held up at customs. Mm -hmm. And Lego, I guess somebody didn't pay the customs on it. Yep. And, and then 20 years later, it's auction. <laughs> it goes to wow. auction, and we got it. Yeah. So. Um, wow. You know, we got a third party from whoever yeah. bid on it. Mm -hmm. he, probably, he probably didn't pay anything for them. We paid a decent amount for them. Mm -hmm. but it's a cool piece. Yeah. It's... That we could probably have here for this video. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Did you want to talk about the mask or that? Um... Yeah. So, Bionicle is obviously its own podcast. Yeah. There's, Bionicle is. Have we done that one? I think we we have, yeah. a couple, a couple mm -hmm. times. I think it was our most, one of our most popular mm -hmm. ones. But this, this is a Bionicle mask, and I have it here because it doesn't look like a Bionicle mask. It 
only looks like the lower portion of one. So I just learned recently that that's an actual mask and it does come in other colors. It comes in like flat silver, mm -hmm. but that is a rare color. What's the name of that color? Flat dark gold or something like that. Flat it's really dark weird. gold. And it's worth about $40. And a lot of people don't even know it's Lego. They don't know it's Bionicle. And if they do know it's Bionicle, they would not guess that it's a Bionicle mask. You really got to know your Bionicle to... Or that it's expensive, that. right? You know, or just, to know that it it's expensive. It looks somewhat yeah. mundane, yeah. So. And we just, we found this particular piece sorting Lego. Mm -hmm. And it has the older style connection yeah. that falls off really mm -hmm. easily. I believe this was Angel telling us this was the style where you were supposed to be able to knock it off. Mm -hmm. The battling yeah. ones. Mm -hmm. And this... Probably, you said this is probably the most single expensive piece of plastic that we, we have, have on the down table. here. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It, for volume, sure, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cypress tree might be more. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. It's a bigger piece, but we got this one uh, cypress tree, the classic. These are gorgeous. A Leland cypress, right? Yeah. Looks Please come back out with these or a variant. These are gorgeous. They were all the way back in town, right? All the way up until yep. the like classic castle town set had two? one. They, I don't think they ever came out in a castle set, but they did come in, in like a booster pack, an expansion pack that no. had four of them, and it was like seven bucks. I forget the price on in the oh, magazine. Five bucks. I actually got that as a kid. I had four of them. Wow. And from that pack, it was like you could get them at Lego.com. It was <sighs> simple. And in that same wave, they had sand red and other things too. Yeah. So from that or that one town set. Or they might have come in one castle. I don't think they did. Super rare, super expensive. It has been expensive for most of Lego's gentle, time. Gentle. Yeah, it's easy with that, Dustin. <laughs> it's a rubber Where did piece. Those go for? Now it's about forty. Forty uh, for a good one. Yeah. And so, but it, yeah, so it's just crazy. Absolutely. We bonkers. actually have quite a few of those. We have a, a good handful of them. We've sold a few of them online, but we I think we've run out. Yeah, we need to restock them yeah. for people. But yeah. So if you if you want one, call the store and you can order one over the phone. Yeah. Don't got, quote us on the price, but it's yeah. We'll have, to, we'll have to double check on Bricklink. It fluctuates yeah. regularly. So the rounded tree, the smaller rounded tree is uh, out of print but is that super rare it's more common for sure can yeah. be a lot more sets um, yeah it depends on the color uh this is certain colors are more rare than others yeah yeah speaking of which there's a, a bush that's a common bush that they're probably still putting in sets mm -hmm. this color do you guys justin do you know what this came up i do not know mark i'm sure i know yeah. mark knows yeah. it was a mixel oh yeah it was the yeah. hairpiece okay. It was the yeah, it was the hair piece on the mixel for the awesome. electro guy. <laughs> Actually, it looks really cool, and it only came in that one mixel set, and it's five to ten dollars. Yeah, for this one expensive little, guy. little bush. Yeah, yeah, it's great um, color. The red ones of these are less common. Yeah, I wouldn't call them rare, but they're less common. But people like to put them on the front of a minifigure and yeah. make it or on the back, yeah. on the back of a minifigure. Oh, like so it's, it's like a blood spray. Yeah, yeah. Like they're getting shot. Not what Lego intended, spurting. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's so odd? I didn't know that until I started working here. There's lower shrubs. Yeah, the the it's like yeah. an old expansion to the bush. You can and make the, it thicker and yeah. A little they tall. had red and green in that. And that those are pretty hard to find too. They're pretty fragile too because mm -hmm. they break easy. Mm. Now, going along with the plants, this is a tree stump, which is really neat because it's hollow inside, and you can put a mini figure in there. Justin, you want to take a guess what? Western, came? right? It only came in Western sets. It was in a Harry Potter set. Yeah. Uh, oh. I, I think it was in Hagrid's Hut, the first one. Mm -hmm. And that's the old dark brown, and it was uh, that goes for five to ten dollars yeah. too. Those are those are pretty expensive. And it has, uh, what, five regular bar connections? Yeah. It's, it's sort of like a regular bar. It's got, a, like, a flat inside. It's oh, really yeah. weird. But it does fit, like, a, you can put a plant piece or a, any piece with a hole in the stud. It'll fit on there pretty well. I thought these came in Westerns also, no? I think so. I think it, the, the Native they, American they sets had might them. have been in a Western oh, right. set yeah. as well, yeah. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's an Indian mm -hmm. in the box cover. There's an Indian standing in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <He> cannot... <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's another example of uh, designed to have something fit in it. You have this yep. larger barrel. This particular one in tan, I think, is from the Indiana Jones uh, Cairo Escape set. Mm -hmm. Also, I think those would have originally come in Western in the old brown, so that you could have a cowboy shooting from, in from inside the barrel, like the, the Probably Western films. Probably on some pirate sets, too. Probably, yeah. yeah. They don't make the big barrel anymore at all, but then this 
light tan one was only in that one set. I believe so, yeah. They made a lot of those Indiana Jones sets, mm -hmm. the production-wise, I think. Yeah. And it, that was in one of the smaller battle packs that was probably $10 at the time. Mm -hmm. So because of that, it's only like a $2 piece. Yeah. You know, if it was in a $100 set, this would probably be very a, expensive. 10 to 20 dollar piece what what a great water tower for an old building mm -hmm. yeah. for yeah. sure yeah, in they, fact the western saloons that we could see custom made all have these on top mm -hmm. usually with a three yeah. by three dish on a little top. lid on that yeah now and this reminds me of some of the really rare pieces <laughs> the quidditch ball from the hungarian horn tail set for mm -hmm. harry potter Sauron's ball from the tower of saruman yeah those pieces are really really rare they're 30 40 dollars each but we don't have them i mean this we need them to complete sets we sell them they're yep. gone we're only using what we have here yeah. so yes this, and there's so much more than this we could go on forever mm -hmm. about about this stuff but we could do probably a few more podcasts so <laughs> yeah. if you do if you like this podcast yeah let us know and we'll we'll do all different we'll get more pieces. stuff yes. yes we have more yeah. stuff we'll get more so and we do have a couple left oh yeah one more that i, I had to cover is pneumatic pieces these guys are just really interesting because you don't see them that often they still make them every now and then it's not like they're out of production like some of the pieces that we've shown today these guys are cool because you, you pump them up they fill with air and then they just go silently <sighs> And they work really, really well. They're mm -hmm. almost flawless. They're and it's, great. It's amazing. No electronics. Yeah. And they make things move. And it's a good example of technology and yeah. how kids can learn how pneumatics work. And, you know, it's kind of how we siphon the water out of our fish tanks yep. to when we go to clean them. Exactly. You know, I did a video on the Technic pneumatic set. It was literally just called the okay. pneumatic set. Mm -hmm. So watch that because I do go into explanation on how it works and stuff. I don't recognize the tank, though. You I said think it's probably older, but okay. I'm not sure. Because a lot of these were in the 90s as well. Mm -hmm. But then they've made more recent sets that still use the same formula, the same system. So. The, I, I love it. That tank, I think, was in the submarine, the Technic submarine. Yeah, oh. that's one set. That's it the was first a yellow time. submarine. Yeah, that's the first example that I saw in action. You could just mm -hmm. pump it up, and then it would just be like... <sighs> You know, like literally grab stuff. I'm like, yeah. that is so cool. I mean, you can barely do that with power functions because of all the gearing and stuff. Like yeah. That. But then this is just like you just flip, flip a switch and it works amazing. And it looks more organic. Yeah. The way it's it kind smoother. of smoothly moves yeah. and stuff. I want to see more of these in production. Just yeah. Of how I don't know why they don't do Maybe this. It's expensive I, it's, to make. I don't know. Uh, um, you, you said the large Technic sets still include. I believe so. I saw yeah. um, some as late as like in 2013 or later. So it's like within the last. 10 years they've still been doing them but even system could be using this stuff it's amazing so okay and yeah. uh you know something I'm, i i think we've covered everything but one thing that we definitely didn't cover were something we talked about was the boat ballasts oh yeah I, we I, forgot I, to grab those i have two on my desk in my lego studio i forgot to grab this morning so <laughs> i mean unless you're holding it they don't look like they're a thick brick but they're very heavy they're weighted bricks yeah it's a two by two by six so it's like basically it's a two by six that's too high and it's like super heavy it's like four of them would be the weight of your phone you know it's like mm -hmm. really quite and a heavy it's piece. made to go at the bottom of the boat so mm -hmm. that they, when you start stacking Lego on top of the boat, it doesn't fall over. Yeah. So the weight's down at the bottom. It pulls and it, it into the water. It keeps yeah. it in the water. Yeah. yeah. And they had two different types. They also had a uh, rounded one mm -hmm. that went on the bottom of the boat. Yeah, in the water. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys happen to know how they make them? Is there metal inside? How do they? It make has them? to be metal. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's it's got a metal piece inside. I don't know, and it's just like either glued or I forget if it's like fused. Somehow it's just sealed inside, so you can't access that. We've got part a of it. bag of maybe twelve to fifteen of them. Mm -hmm. Well, and they're not super expensive. Yeah, we'll a couple have bucks to, each. We'll have to bust one open. Yeah. Oh, that would. Yeah. We'll have to You'd want to do open. that? Yeah, okay. I, I, I want to see. Now that you say something, get a little Dremel or something. Inside. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would. I, I was thinking more of like a hammer. <laughs> Slow mo. Hammer. Be a good video. Mm -hmm. All right. What, what's yeah. inside your Lego? <laughs> we do have a few small little things that Andrew. If you want to extend us. the video more, we could do this. Uh, the people want to hear us talk, right? These are from the Belleville set, actually, over here, but uh, the same kind of minty color. So those two and these Ooh. are from that. So we've talked about the frame already, but what I like about these are, are they're just. They're one by one tiles. They kind of look like plates, but they're just tiles and they've yeah. got the flowers on the bottom of them. And these are common pieces. You see mm -hmm. them 
everywhere, but in this color, they're so unique. Yeah, pretty rare. And sure. this piece in particular, there's a tan one that I've talked about before that only came on the, the Darth Maul, 1999 right? uh, Darth Maul Qui-Gon Jinn set, and it's on his speeder, and it's holding his steering wheel. And they only put it in that one set in tan. And it's like, if, you, if you're trying to complete that set, you don't have it. It's like five bucks for this little yeah. tiny thing. It's like, why is that? It's crazy. Okay, so you got this little light, but it's <clears> in this case, it's solid pink. It's from the Yellow Submarine. Pretty cool set. I think uh, Bricklin calls those bionicle eyes. Yeah, it's like a, it, I think, it, yeah, yeah it, in this mold, it's bionicle eye, but it's the same shape as an old town light that went over a light and sound piece from those the old town. Those are like 70s. They're very yeah. expensive, so yeah. So is this still on Bricks and Pieces? This is still in print? That one is still in print. Not in that color, probably. Okay. But, um, pretty cool piece. This is from old day Harry Potter sets. It's a, basically a pink lightsaber blade. I think it was probably used as a wand or something like that in the Harry Potter sets. But uh, rare color. Not not every Jedi has a pink lightsaber, you know. You got the uh, mop end from the Disney castle. That's the only time that color was used, I believe. Because it was in gray in the CMF. That's yep. when it was introduced. And it's fairly common in the CMF, but the, the tan one, you have to get that really nice Disney castle. <laughs> yeah. uh, and there was only one, right? Only one, yes, I believe so. so. And then you have a little piece from the Fiat, a little hinge piece, and it's very There's special color. Probably a lot of pieces in that Fiat there. Yeah. Very unique, unique colorations. Yeah. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning was that, that Lego is making a lot of new pieces mm -hmm. in the fact that they haven't been seen in those colors or it's just a new piece, you know, a very small scale stuff. So like this from the Yellow Submarine, this from the Disney Castle, this from the Fiat. It's all examples of new mm -hmm. pieces, new colors, but yeah. yeah. And this piece isn't that new, it's the color. That's the so color of crazy it. Yeah, about yeah. this one. That piece is a fairly standard hinge piece, but mm -hmm. in that color makes it very special. The last one is uh, this white, too long axle from uh, early 2000s. I'm not even sure where, where, where Angie said that was from. You do not see them in white. You see them in red and black all the time, but yeah. not white, so that's pretty cool. Crazy. Moving forward, would you guys want to see large specialized pieces in Lego sets return ever? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Super rare, one-off. For like special things like those okay. wheels or bricks I, or roofs. It, yeah. It's all neat. I, I love it all. When you go to a convention and you see how people use all these different parts, it's like, oh, well, you know, I never would have thought they would have used this to make nunchucks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, whatever. Or um, like using the chrome pieces in that one build so cool. Mm. You know, it's like oh, there's yeah. so many great uses for these weird pieces. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think it will ever return or are we in a more cost-effective Lego? society where large super specialized pieces mm -hmm. will never return i think maybe one or two weird pieces that are big maybe no problem for lego but in a large scheme of things like the early 2000s late 90s probably not going to see that level of uh, wild creativity in pieces in my opinion they're really doing well with their business model now so mm -hmm. i don't think you're going to see too too giant a shift in the next few years so. okay i would stray away from that a little bit in that do you have that magnetic bank um, that we had down here. Oh, down oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lego is putting a lot of big pieces in their sets still yeah. today, I think. Uh, number one, their junior sets. You get those big archways, you know. And the That's true. Those are pretty big. They have yeah. they are still coming out with things that are kind of this size, but then they've got the ramps, and mm -hmm. then they've got the new road plate, you know, mm -hmm. the road That's ramps. right, the new road plates are pretty big. So they are coming out with large elements. And then, like, this is a magnet that is in one of the Lego City sets. I mean, look at that. That's... It's a big, chunky thing right it there. Is. Mm -hmm. They've got the sirens that they had on top of the police cars that mm -hmm. you push the button and they light up. Yep. And they didn't. They don't work good. The, the batteries run out instantly. Wow. But they're expensive. They're mm -hmm. cool. They're really cool to have flashing lights in yeah. your city. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the parachutes, the water sprayers. Yeah. You know, it makes a what should be like a $20 set a $40 set. Yeah. Because these big elements, you can see how expensive they are to make. Mm -hmm. But they're still putting them in. Yeah. So. But they're all action elements. They're all a gimmicky type of Play action. Play features, yeah. As far as, like, just a buildable structure. Mm-hmm. 
it, they're tending not to do larger ones. I didn't think about sections. it. The juniors, four junior sets. Yeah, the, the junior sets. They, they, you know, it's not a, it's not this. It's not a brick. But like big archways mm -hmm. and but buildings they, and they have bases that are in there, and they have the ramps coming off. Yeah. And stuff. Mm -hmm. and then yeah. The new road those are fairly stuff. big pieces. So if they keep doing those sets, I think we could probably see some yeah. big weird pieces like mm -hmm. that. Not very easy to build with. So you've had some of the Ninjago sets. The bigger ones use those large uh, spinners that fly in the. Mm -hmm. You know, the larger propellers. Mm -hmm. I think they make them and discontinue them, mm -hmm. and then they make new stuff. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see them, just like these older ones. You don't see them in lots of sets. You see them scattered about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to probably see, keep seeing the that continue. Yeah. For a while. I think so. Okay. I think so. I think that makes so sense. So if this is a magnet, is this metal, or is there a reverse polarity? There's metal that... That's just uh, bricks that are stuck to the bottom. Oh, okay. I'm going to work with this metal, metal piece, piece on, on the pneum pneumatics. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like a seat belt. Yeah. That works. Cool. <laughs> so that magnet works. Look at you, Lego. You can Look hear that you. magnet inside there. Yeah. Around. Well, thank you, gentlemen, so yeah. much for joining me once again, talking about all this awesome, cool, rare stuff. Uh, please, if you'd like to, if you're not already, please subscribe. Tell us what else you want to see, anything you want us to cover. As Chris mentioned earlier, we love to bring you what you want. So we will see you guys later, and peace out. <laughs>